Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast. I'm Lance Armstrong, sitting here in Aspen, Colorado. Got J.B. Hager down there in the ATX. Johan Brunil just uh, with, yeah, continues with the, 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 the backdrop. I'd, I'd love to know which of your kids helps you with this. <laughs> and uh, George Hincap, he looks like he's over. Uh, I hear he's on a college tour. He's, that shows you how old the man's getting. He's already, never mind, I just graduated a kid from college, but he's <laughs> down there in Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> is that, that is some, some room that you're in, George. That's, uh, are you having meetings there with like the board, 30 of the board from the college? Yeah, we're, um, we're getting them in after the show, but I'm at the Charleston Place Hotel, one of Charleston's most iconic hotels. And they were super hospitable to me. I told them I had the show and they emptied this whole space for me today. I'm kind of uh, pretty excited about it. And, and see how easy that was. It's not very hard. I will say, I will say, I, I will say this, George, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. So I was just down and, and we are going to, we are the show's the subject of today's shows recapping the second week of uh, the tour of Italy, um, which is still a wide open race. We'll break that down in a second. But I was just down in Bentonville, Arkansas for this really cool race called the rule of three. And man, if I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me where George was, I mean, this whole in the fucking in the whole jizzy thing has taken on a life of its own. People would be like, hey, I was George. here." No, George couldn't make it. And they were like, every one of them uh, couldn't get a jizzy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, You, you you have created a whole phenomenon, man. I'm what surprised. what is that uh, rule of three? How's the what's the format for that? It's a crazy. I think it's one of the most creative formats out there, at least here domestically. So it's a hundred miles. It's a mix of pavement, gravel, and single track, and really really tough single track. I might add. Um, and, and you, but you you got to pick one bike. So you know most folks choose or chose a gravel bike. But the big, the biggest sort of decision you have to make is tire choice. Um, the mm-hmm. single track is, is, and of course, we had terrible weather, so that made things uh, much, much worse. But the single track is tough. Like, you got to get through it and not, I mean, last year we did it. We sliced a sidewall after like five or six miles. This year we rode some specialized tires uh, that were recommended to us. And we, of the three of us, I did it with Dean Hill and, and Courtney, who's on our team as well here. We do uh, not one mechanical. Now it took us a long time just cause it was, it's, it's hard. It's about 7,500 vert. Um, but it's all about the tire choice. And you see a lot of folks as well on, on mountain bikes, but nobody, obviously nobody on a road bike. You could, can, you couldn't get through the single track on a road bike, but what size tires? Uh, the size that Bolch put on. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to get fuck, stopped. What the fuck kind of question is that, man? <laughs> okay, is, it I, I said, Dave, is that my bike? That's my, that's my bike. Okay, cool. I'm going to throw my leg over it, clip in, start pedaling. What kind of question is that? I knew I knew who made the tires. <laughs> I think it's a, as, as, a, as, as becoming a gravel aficionado, I think it's actually an important question to know the size of the tires required to use at the rule of three. But it anyway, was the, it was the on. biggest, it was the biggest tire we could fit in the, in the Ventum GS one. So it, it worked. I, I was man, but long day, eight hours. I, it is one of those things to get done. You're like, why, why am I, why am I doing this? Like I am 50, <laughs> like eight hours on a bike. Like my tank may never, ever be the same. Like why I've done enough of this shit. I was riding past all these golf courses, even in the rain. I was like, now hang on. Huh. Anyways, uh, today's show brought to you by Dry Farm Wines. This this is a cool company. George and I have been working with them for a couple of years. Uh, the whole wine making process is complicated and has, um, you know, m- so many of us enjoy wine. And wine is really a, um, it's a key part of many, many people's lives. Uh, Dry Farm has come along and really revolutionized it by sourcing biodynamic and organic wines. Uh, little known fact, uh, the FDA actually approves up 70 plus, uh, chemicals and, and compounds that you can put in wine in standard wine making dry farm has sourced wines that, uh, that don't have any of that. And so it's, uh, it's a cleaner, I, I hesitate to say this. It's a cleaner buzz, certainly a cleaner morning the next morning, but, uh, a really cool crew. They're doing a special offer for us. 
They made a special Italian box sourced exclusively from Italy. They're doing a French box during our Tour de France show, which is obviously sourced in France. And then at the end of the year, they're going to do a Spanish box, um, all biodynamic wines sourced in those three countries. Uh, head on over to dryfarmwines.com slash we do. And the first 50 orders, by the way, will receive a complimentary we do notebook. Very cool. Uh, also today brought to you by Element. Now, this is even as cold and as wet and as nasty as it was the other day, I was sweating my face off. Uh, Element got me through. I just talked about it. Eight hours on the bike. Uh, no cramps, I might add. And, I, you know, for a guy who doesn't train enough to go ride an eight hour race, I just figured I was going to be rolled up like a little baby cramping. Uh, I didn't cramp at all. Element got me through 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, no sugar, no gluten, no BS. A new offer for our listeners, a free sample pack with any order. So head on over to drink LMNT. Those are the letters, drinklmnt.com slash the move. All right, let's I jump into I leave home without it. I don't no. leave home without it. It's in my water bottle right now. I can't drink the sugary stuff on the bike anymore during tennis. I'm a total element fan right now, so don't miss it. During what? T I tennis. said, do not miss tennis. out on this. Oh, I, 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 I thought you were talking about tennis. I did. I said tennis. This morning I had a two and a half hour match. It's seven in the morning, and I'm in Charleston. It's super humid here, and I was drinking the element. I love it. It's um, my go-to drink. Love it. Love are it. You a, are you a pickleball guy too? No. Not at all. Not, not yet. Not this, yet. Let me tell you this sport. Let me tell you this, 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 I've played this pickleball thing. Everybody talking about pickleball now, mm. whoever invented this fucking sport. Okay. Needs to reinvent the scoring system. The, how about we just go one to nothing, two to one, five to three, whatever. I would play that sport if I could figure out the scoring. <laughs> Anyways, Johan's lost. Johan just like, are, aren't we here to talk about an Italian bike race? <laughs> this, this, uh, let, let's break down the second week of the tour of Italy. Um, as I, as I alluded to earlier, anybody's race, Jay Henley is right there, has experience in this race, has finished on the podium. Richard Carapaz, obviously in pink, eh, you know, in pink, but got some, got some warning lights on is what I'm hearing you say, Johan. You know, I mean, uh, he's yeah, he got pink in the in what I think the most spectacular stage of the whole Giro until now. That circuit race in Torino uh, with uh, the climb of Superga, and um, you know, he definitely showed there that he was super strong. He did an amazing attack, not with at the end the result that he wanted, but I was really impressed with um, with the team. Bora Hansgro, the guys here behind me. Yeah. That's a picture. That's a picture of of that stage, and they basically turned the Giro upside down that day. Um, maybe not in terms of the, the the general classification, but they showed that you know it was not just Ineos who was in the in in the race. Uh, Ineos, uh, in my opinion, they are all in for Carapaz, but they can't do any damage with anybody else. And Bora is completely different. They have several several guys who can really, really put the hurt on. And um, yeah, I found it interesting to see that uh, they got so much confidence in Jay Hindley. Mm. Uh, otherwise, they would never have planned an attack like that. Because, you know, on a circuit race like that, it was super, super difficult stage that day. That day. But, you know, if they don't have the confidence in, in one guy as Jay Hindley, you know, it it could basically explode into your face, and you know, uh, so so they they took the initiative from from far out, like eighty k to go or something, and um, yeah, that stage was amazing. I mean, uh, finally, uh, stage the stage winner was Simon Yates, who, as we all know, you know, Ooh, fell, just, fell fell back yeah. fell, fell yeah. back uh, on on Blockhouse on the first big 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 mountain climb, but uh, you know, he bounced back and he was he was amazing that day. Um, and also, what I what I saw there on that stage was uh, uh, a surprisingly good Vincenzo Nibali, who mm. we should not forget about for the podium. Just, not just to over, win, just over a minute down only. Well, yeah, I mean he's he's uh, he's at two fifty eight now. So uh, in GC, um, like, so like for, I, like I said, three minutes. Yeah, yeah, two fifty eight exactly. Uh, but, but I think I think that the podium is still in reach. You know, I mean these are his stages now and. Apparently the weather's changing. Also, the heat is gone. We may get some rain, 
Uh, and you know, there's a lot of climbs means also a lot of descents, and you know what Vincenzo Libela can do on those on those descents. Can we go back to so, Bora for so, just so. To, Bora for just a second, Johan? You know, this I love this story because go back, you know, nine months, right? Uh, Sagan uh, is going to leave the team. Um, has crazy demands, which, you know, he's probably earned a lot of these demands, you know, wanted to take his posse and, and get the big salary and bring a few of the sponsors. And, and you sort of look at Bora and you're like, you know, everybody wants to leave. You kind of get, you kind of relegate them in a sense. And, you know, where has Peter Sagan been? He's had some health issues, et cetera, et cetera, get, but, you know, got everything he wanted in the off season contract wise and demand wise. But you got this team that was that was just sort of, um, you know, just kind of out there. I, I love yeah. it. I love the fact that 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 you know they, whatever they are working with and believing in. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I mean, I think they did some clever moves. Also, you know, like they uh, in the off season, he's not at the Giro, but they they uh, they hired uh, Vlasov, who's a great rider, great rider. He already won two stage races this year, and. Um, and here in this, I mean, in this, uh, in this Giro, I think, you know, the, the, the rebirth of, of Jay Hindley after being second, surprisingly in, in the Giro two years ago, and then like kind of disappearing, um, and now being back and especially showing that, that confidence. Um, I, I think they're doing a really good job, Bora. Um, there's for the moment, they're the strongest team in the race. And, uh, yeah, you know, at, this, at, this, yeah. this, this really reminds me of back in the day when we'd be controlling the race, when we'd be the Ineos team. And then all of a sudden we had the own say and the T-Mobiles take advantage of perhaps some of our climbing weakness and put mm -hmm. three or four guys in the front, isolate Lance. You know, there's, there's blood in the water right now, so to speak. These guys are seeing what they can do together as a team. And I don't think that's the last of that sort of attack we're going to see at the Giro d'Italia. Good. Good. Yeah, I agree. And I think yeah, I, before, but before we move on from, from Jai Henley, we touched on it a little bit on JB squared yesterday. <laughs> But I asked Johan, I'm like, why was this guy not on our radar? We did not mention him in pre-show whatsoever. So from second in the Giro a couple of years ago, what was going on in that quiet year? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, we, I mean, last year, I don't know what happened. Uh, he, may, he may have been affected by COVID. Um, but he basically, I, I saw five stage races that he abandoned last year. So there was obviously something on something going on health wise. And this year he kind of got back, you know, a few top tens. He was up there in Tour of Catalonia. And uh, but man, I mean, now uh, the Giro is obviously bringing him, you know, <laughs> great, great success. And uh, I think he's going to be Carapaz's biggest rival. And he's, he's going to be a tough guy in the, in the last two weeks, in the last few days. But, sorry. And, and this race means a lot to him, clearly. I mean, the, the, you, you get into a three week race. You get through the first two weeks without major problems, crashes, illnesses, mm -hmm. and you're there and you have the experience and it's so, you know, would be so clearly important for the team. Like th they have the momentum. Yeah. So that yeah. they can uh, still have a uh, bad day, right? Anything can happen. And if the weather turns and there's, you know, gnarly downhills, there can be crashes, but right now they have the momentum and, and I don't, I see him, I see him there. Not only that, but we've seen Carapaz strong throughout the whole race. Jay Hindley's been sort of hiding out a bit. And now we have the rest day. So when you see these guys starting to kind of get better and better in the second week, and then you hit a rest day, then lots of times they come back even stronger than all mm -hmm. the rest of the guys. So I think we're going to see a lot of these, a lot more action coming up here in the next few days. Yeah, they're definitely super confident. And Hindley in his in his interview starts to really, you know, not he's not hiding anymore now. He says he's here to win. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that 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 comes with what they feel in the race, you know, think little things that we don't see, but the way they climb compared to others and they they notice little things that uh, that, that bring their, their morale up there. And uh, yeah, from tomorrow on, you know, from tomorrow on, it's going to be a different game. You know, tomorrow is uh, probably one of the hardest stages of the whole Giro, 5,250 meters vertical that's i mean how many feet, how much how many feet is that i don't know that's uh that's like six, 16, 16, 000, 16, that's 16 yeah. 5 16, yeah. that's yeah. that's mm. yeah so um so yeah i mean uh, i'm pretty sure that boda hans grow they're going to they're going to be aggressive again you know they they it's not in their interest to wait for ineos just set the tempo and 
protect Carapaz and then fight it out on the last climb. I mean, they probably will fight out, fight it out on the last climb, but in my opinion, Bora Hansgrohe will want to isolate Carapaz. Um, and tomorrow is an ideal stage for that. And, there's, and we and all there's... know what the day after the rest day is like going to be. Not that this whole week has not been crazy aggressive. I mean, the start, the first hours of each stage have been just mm-hmm. mind boggling. I mean, 50K plus an hour stages. The guys making the breakaways are no panicking. No panic cooking. They're all, you know, hardcore <laughs> breakaway specialists. Um, so it's been a super difficult week. And tomorrow, I think that's going to be, uh, you know, some of the last chances from some guys to get in breakaways. It's going to be another really tough start. And and on the Jay Henley front, keep in mind, or you know, as I'm just looking through the GC here, he's got an Emmanuel Bookman who is only one fit, sitting in seventh place, only a minute fifty eight down. As a card to play, you got yeah. two Bar- Bahrain victorious Bahrain victorious riders, uh, Mikel Landa and, and Pelo Bilbao. Still got Jao Almeida hanging in there. Um, th- this is this. There's going to be some. Fi- it has to be fireworks, right? I mean, this this is a, this set up for for uh, attacks. Yeah, but I think I think a stage like tomorrow normally, you know, it will be amongst the big favorites. You know, there's three first category climbs. Um, there's basically only 25 kilometers to get in a, go in a breakaway on an easy terrain, but uh, um, I think it's it's going to be a big battle for GC tomorrow. Hmm. What else? Before, before, before we go back, oh, yeah, before we go, go back and talk talk about the coming up stage, we got to go. Hey, what happened Tuesday with Gourmet making history? Um, mm-hmm. What an um, amazingly exciting finish, and then such a big disappointment on the podium, obviously. But you know, it was, it was just fun personally. I think for me and for the whole team here to watch history being made. We were all kind of hoping that it would happen. He was close the whole time, the whole first eight, nine days. And uh, just the way he won that stage, the confidence that he oh. had in himself, the team had in him, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. just basically riding Vanderpool, best guy in the world. Off I was going to say, the, it, 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 the big story is who he beat, right? I mean, we can't, yeah. we'd be hard pressed to, to, to name somebody in this peloton that has the power like that finish power, you know, slight false flat uphill, uh, as strong as, as, as Matthew Vanderpool to see what he did to him. And then to also see Vanderpool's reaction when he looked over and was like, Oh yeah, I can't match that. And just, it just gave the chapeau. Mm-hmm. I mean, what an exceptional performance. And, and I mean, that's, you could look at, you know, any, a lot of these races, you know, you play your cards, right. You get in the right move. You're slightly faster than somebody else. That was the best man winning. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, Best man winner. You know, and Johan, real quick, I know he wasn't scheduled to do the tour, um, but now you got to think, hey, he did nine days, eight, nine days, 10 days of the Giro. I mean, he wrote an incredible Giro. There could be more history being made here this summer, we hope, if they put him in the tour. I, I think, I personally think, you know, if I would be the, the team boss there, I think it would be really interesting to take him to the tour, even if it's for 10 days. You know, he's still young. and But I mean, that guy, I mean, he can beat Van der Poel. I mean, that that. You know, there's not many guys who can say that. So there's definitely a Tour de France stage in his legs. Um, the team believes in him, you know, and uh, you, we could see it already on stage one, you know. On stage one, Van der Poel beat him barely. And we could see the reaction of Van der Poel. You know, he, he was happy on stage one, but he said, you could see him, okay, this was this was really hard. And the way he the way he won, I mean, the, 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 I've only seen one time in Van der Poel's road career the same thing. It was when he when he lost against Asgreen, the Tour of Flanders. He had the same, you know, they were sprinting man to man, and then Van der Poel had to sit down. This was the same thing. So, um, I mean, that guy. I mean, we, we can't we can't say it's a surprise, you know, if you win Gand uh a guy, a young guy with no experience, you have to have something special. But uh, but yeah, I think this was this was really really a nice nice victory, and um, I mean I, I I mean hope hopefully they take him to the tour. Listen, I mean for the for the they have nobody for GC anyway in the Tour de France. Well, so for, for, you know, and, and, and yeah, they're right. And and for those who didn't follow the 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 story, because the real the the story is is twofold. One, the amazing stage win, but I guess an even bigger story, sadly for him, is is the podium ceremony when. Um, you know, d- typical tour of Italy where they, they hand out the champagne. It's, it looks a little more like an F1 race than it would a stage of the tour de France. And the guy pops the cork and it nails him right in the eye. I mean, what are the chances? Mm-hmm. Um, 
and, and he so and, I, and ended his I, race. I he, had, my th- he had to pull out. I have my theory on that. Typically, correct me if I'm wrong, the champagne bottles are normal. No, uh, there's 0.75 liter of champagne, correct? And these are magnums. So you can't really hold a big magnum like that uh, in the normal sense and pop it up. So these guys are going down and doing it on the floor. Very dangerous, as we saw, mm. what can happen. And apparently, the doctor said he sees this stuff all the time during the holidays. You know, they'll get a few people coming in with, uh, you know, a cork hitting them in the eye. And wow. fortunately, it wasn't as serious as he had seen, but he said that's a very um, serious injury. Well, but it, if it, you look, it, it can be very serious. I mean, you can lose you look, your eye. Yeah. yeah. If you look, Van der Poel had the same thing on stage one. I mean, he, it hit the, the his, his, his hat. But uh, I mean, since then, since then, uh, after that stage, there's no more corks on the champagne ba- bottles. They're all open on the podium. And so they just shake them and uh, they don't have to uncork them anymore. But uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, what, what are the chances and what a contrast, you know, from being on top of the world? super happy celebrating with uh, with the teammates hugging each other high-fiving each other and then 10 minutes later there yep. you go yep. you know i mean and what and what's and the update what's the update how's it you know is in terms of recovery is he i mean have they said yeah, anything? I've, 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 I've the only thing i've heard is that there's a big internal hematoma and uh and of course you know it was also because of precaution uh, i think he's still i mean and I think the days after is basically when, when everything starts, you know, obviously there was this big shock and uh, he would probably have been able to continue, but you know, under which circumstances and, and how dangerous also can that be in the Peloton, right? Because if you, I mean, if you experience seeing like vaguely out of one eye and, and completely out of the other eye, I mean, that must be a whole different experience. Um, so I think, I think they did the right thing to, you know, pull them out of the Giro and, uh, I mean, hopefully we'll see him in July. You know, I, I, I would be looking forward to that. Yeah, that'd be amazing. You know, normally we read uh, listener comments and questions at the end of the show, but I think this is an appropriate time to read this one, if you don't mind. It Go says, it. hi, guys. I'd like to point out that using champagne in your description of the latest Move podcast is incorrect. Should be Prosecco. Prosecco. I knew that was coming. <laughs> maybe, maybe more like a fun fact, but wanted to let you know anyway. As someone commented, everyone is using champagne, which is a PR disaster for Italy. I love your show. Keep up the good work. That is from Gasper in Slovenia. Well, it, it was a Prosecco cork. <laughs> there's, no, there's, the most, there's not a lot of Prosecco in uh, Eritrea, apparently. It's a different type of pop. When they, when they open that baby, it's... Uh, anyways. But also, um, I, I think also one of the things is that, you know, who knows how long these bottles have been sitting in the in the in the heat there yeah so obviously you know the pressure is the pressure is even more um i mean listen now now they just uh they uncorked them already before so uh let's hope that doesn't that doesn't doesn't happen again but i've seen it i've seen it several times already in other races too it's well, something that you never think about until something happens yeah i think i think we'll probably see a uh a new precedent set. They'll have the bottles open because that's you know once you once you have it open, you just put your thumb over it and yeah. still get everybody. Yeah. Or throw a bone to your your uh, sunglass sponsor and just wear a little <laughs> protective eyewear there. That's true. <laughs> uh, look, before we get into more action, today's show also brought to you by HVMN. So we often hear that fasting and exercise are good for the brain. One reason why is that when we push our bodies to met- metabolic limits, we create nature's super fuel. And those are called ketones. HVMN launched the world's first drinkable ketone in 2017. We talk about it a lot on this show. Uh, the numbers don't lie. 60% of the teams in last year's Tour de, France, Tour de France used HVMN exclusively. And they just signed a $6 million contract with U.S. Special Ops. Uh, the stuff absolutely works. Uh, fun to play around with. Uh, we're, we're just getting going and I'm gearing up for July. Take on Mr. Heat Cappy over there. Uh, the next 100 people to visit HVMN.com and use the promo code THEMOVE20 at checkout will save 20%. One more time, that's HVM, HVMN.com and the promo code is THEMOVE20. Last one, Athletic Greens. My daily ritual, start every day with this stuff. Uh, I'm just, I, I say it every week. And by the way, nothing has changed. I have not all of a sudden started eating like broccoli and asparagus and all this other stuff that you're supposed to eat fruits, vegetables. Come on. 
No, I don't need to. I have it all in my athletic greens, 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens um, all in one bet on you know, a little packet. And as much as I travel, I take the little travel packs all for less than three bucks a day. Take charge of your health. Let's make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just head on over to athleticgreens.com slash the move. That's athleticgreens.com slash the move. Anything else stand out in week two, Johan? Uh, Demar, I mean, you Demar. Know, Demar. Uh, Demar, you know, the, the third stage win. Boy, yeah. that's... Talk about momentum, man. That's got to feel good. Mm -hmm. And also uh, one, one very important abandon is uh, Roman Bardet. You know, Roman Bardet right. was uh, stomach, sitting stomach in, issues. He was sitting in second, I think, or sitting in third and uh, he looked really good. He looked great. He was definitely, definitely a, a candidate for the podium, if not to win it. Um, so, but you know, I mean, and that's part of the race, you know, it's uh, there's races on the bike and then whoever recovers and, some people don't recover and they get sick. And so there's, there's nothing you can do. I mean, sadly, we also, we saw Tom Dumoulin abandoned. He does just doesn't seem to get back to where he wants to be. I saw an interview of him. He was really, really disappointed and actually really down. Um, so I, I don't know. I hope we can see him back, but it starts to, it starts to look like uh, it's going to be difficult for him to get back to the level that we expect him to be on. Mm. Um, and other than not, that, not uh, only that, not only that, the uh, Renaissance of Italian cycling, three Italian stage winners in the, in the mm -hmm. second week with, uh, you know, uh, Danese, Oldani, and then Ciccone, um, great wins by all three. Danese, I mean, coming out of nowhere, about six, seven back in the sprint, what he did was yeah. amazing. Um, then Aldani, uh, taking that win from a very, very difficult breakaway, obviously it's super tough to make that breakaway, but at the end. I mean, he just took the, the race by, by by his own hands. He chased down everything, was super confident, and won with convincing fashion. And, of course, Ciccone. I mean, what an incredible, epic solo stage win in a really tough mountain day. And what a what a, what a a win for, for Trek Segafredo. You know, they were 10 days in the leader's jersey. And the day after they lose the jersey, they win the stage. I mean, you know, just keep it going. And actually, today, uh, one of their... Uh, women broke the hour record, forty nine point twenty five kilometers per hour. Yeah, and she she, did, she didn't break it. She absolutely she, yeah, annihilated yeah. it. Yeah, Ellen Van Dyke. I mean, that's that's fast. I mean, that's that's all. That's even faster than Eddie Merckx, I think, uh, back yep. in the days. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so I mean, they had a, they had a great Giro until now, and uh, you know, they can go home already. They're you know, for them, the Giro is a success. Yeah. One of the other things we wanted to touch on, it was an observation of you. You must stay and watch all the post interviews too. Yeah. Of the writers. Not all of them, but uh, you know, I got, I have a lot of sources that give me information. Okay. Okay. Cause you, you, <laughs> you, you, you touched on it. Why Ciccone was a bit emotional with uh, what he's been going through, but there was a lot of other emotion. Mm. Johan sends this text out to everybody. It's like, they're crying. They're crying. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Well, I think I, I think I'm that glad, I'm glad I missed that. <laughs> I think I uh, it says a lot about the state of the peloton, you know. So yesterday's stage, obviously, the guys who were in the breakaway are not the guys who were battling for GC, and you know they're already super happy to be in the breakaway. Ciccone obviously was very emotional for personal reasons. He had a very difficult last two years. He was hit very strongly by COVID had a very, very difficult time to recover from it. And then his, his mom got really sick. Uh, and there was, I mean, I don't exactly know the, the dynamics there in, from the family, but he had some family issues. Um, so obviously for him, this was, this was like, you know, he, this is the third stage he wins in the Giro. Um, so you would say, okay, you know, it's another one, right? Uh, he, two, two years, three years ago, he was also the king of the mountains in the Giro d'Italia and won the stage on, on the Mortirolo. But uh, but that was very emotional, especially especially these other two guys, number two and number three, uh, Santiago Vitrago uh, was second, and uh, Pedrero from Movistar was third, and it was it was, I mean, it was remarkable to see they were they came you know they were staring in the emptiness in the distance, and the, the interviewer put the microphone and they just said a few words and they started to cry. It's like you know you they were so empty that. 
they just they just couldn't speak. I mean, no, I think um, it's not not only yeah. that, but I was I was listening to La Movida yesterday on my drive down to Charleston. And oh, thank you very much, to, George. Of thank course, you. I love it. I love it. But it was interesting to see Sabato, uh, Mario, and uh, Victor at the Giro. And Mario mm. pointed out it's not only the guys that are winning that are crying or getting second because of emotions and tiredness, but his good friend Richese, who's you know, a veteran mm-hmm. of the of the sport, been around forever, a real hard man of the sport, is also coming across the line. I think he told Mario, he's like, I can't do this anymore. Of course, this is his last race of his professional career, but he just said it's so freaking hard right now that yeah. it just yeah. feels like he can't even continue anymore. Yeah, and he came right. in at 38 minutes with the, with the big groupetto of the sprinters, and he's dead, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to put my mic on mute. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be complete. Ass. I don't know, Lance. I don't know, Lance. I got a couple like, uh, you know, side picks of you on Saturday. You, you looked like I thought I saw a couple of tears coming down your eyes about mile 70. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. I was just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to choose to stay out of this one. <laughs> no, no Chicone winning with, with the person that, you know, uh, Johan, his mother was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. Obviously yeah. tons of emotion there riding for her, uh, you know, riding for the complicated two years she had G- got it. Yeah. The race is hard. Yeah, I, I mean, it, they're all, they're hard. Bike races are hard. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we're living in a new era, Lance. We're getting old. We don't you, get you, that. <laughs> You know, we're, we're, you're, we're, there's only one person on the show who's a bigger asshole than me, and it's you. And you're sitting here like you're like handing out tissues. I mean, this is <laughs> this no. Is we're not. listen. We're no. I'm. I'm gonna let me finish. Let me. Okay. Finish. Good. Good. No. We're. Go ahead. This is a new. This is a new generation. You know, and I'm seeing things that back in the days when I was a cyclist, and even more when I was the team director. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, like now these guys, they're all friends. You know, guys from different teams, different teams go and hug each other after the stage. I mean, that was not, I mean, no way. That's a no-go. You know, you need yeah. to, those guys, you need to beat them so you don't hug them. And, but, you know, nowadays that's, um, that's the way it goes. So I tell you, I, you know, Johan, I thought about you and I the other day. I just finished this documentary. Um, they call me magic. It's a four part uh, documentary on magic Johnson on uh, Apple TV. And you know, and so by the way, it's amazing. So four one hour episodes, the whole story from, you know, high school till today, you know, part owner of the Dodgers, you know, built a huge uh, business empire all the way through um, the diagnosis with HIV, uh, the whole career, everything. But there was this one, one of the episodes, you know, they really focused on the relationship that he had with Isaiah Thomas. And, and of course they end up meeting Isaiah Thomas and the Detroit Pistons in the NBA finals and, you know, magic and Isaiah before every game, whether it's a preseason game, regular season game, playoff game, finals, doesn't matter. They would come out and give each other a little kiss on the cheek. And they had Pat Riley as their head coach, who's of course, one of the greatest of all time. And he pulled him aside and he said, listen, motherfucker, no more. <laughs> okay. I, you can do whatever you want in the off season. You can hoop with whatever you want to go to the gym with whoever you want to vacation with whoever this is the NBA finals. There are no friend. They are not your friends. Nobody on that other side over there is your friend. Stop. And it, it, you know, I don't think magic stopped, but it reminded me so much of the, you know, George can tell this story or attest to this better than anybody. I mean, you know, the, the, the village depart, I see George or, you know, these guys over there having a little espresso with it. I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> the fuck you did, you did, you did? No, 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 no. In August, <laughs> whatever, do whatever you want. December, whatever you want. July. And- no, we hate them with, they are not our friends. <laughs> my, my, arg- my argument back then was, Hey man, I'm just trying to meet the ladies. Was well, not the riders. Well, you know what? It worked out for you. <laughs> hence, hence the reason you're touring colleges at the moment. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, I've got a good email here. And uh, I think uh, Johan could probably elaborate on this the most. But uh, it says, love seeing the show back. Uh, I've seen something new in this tour. A driver of a team car being fined and relegated for dangerous driving. If you mm-hmm. missed it, the lotto team car was fined and relegated to last position in the convoy after 
rushing from a rider wheel change when they got that call of the Roger Kluger incident after he collided with the moto. Can you uh, talk a bit about this? How often does a stage race hand out fine to team drivers? How big is this fine? And what is the impact of being relegated? That is from Luke in Australia. Well, for, for starters, that that that's a good call, right? The, 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 it's, it is a very real uh, and present danger in the peloton. And, and you get, you get some directors that look, Johan was a great driver and could, you know, could find his way in a car through uh, dropped riders or whatever, but damn dude, it is dangerous, right? You're mixing it up, not just with riders. Then you're trying to come back from a crash or, or a flat or whatever. I mean, we, the drivers have to be held accountable. It is a miracle that, that there are not more accidents. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Johan, you can speak to this better, but I'll just say, uh, a fine is one thing that who cares? I mean, the, the UCI, they, they give out these little Mickey mouse fines, you know, 300 Swiss francs. Okay. Whatever getting relegated. That's a bigger problem, right? If you go from car number four to car number 21, that's a big problem. Nobody wants that. Yeah. I have a good story about that. Actually. I mean, I had a few of those plans uh, for, you know, not, not for, I mean, not for, I mean, yeah. I mean, for dangerous driving, I would say, you know, once I got disqualified from the tour of Georgia for dangerous driving, um, <laughs> but the most famous one, I don't know if you remember this. I mean, you probably well, you know, don't this. just, don't just glide over that. You got, I know, you're, right? going you're going 130 miles an hour or something in a 35. What was it? I was, uh, I, I was going, I, would, I was, I mean, I talked about it with a friend who was actually with me that day with Noel, you know, Noel, uh, our, our mutual friend, he was with, yeah. he was with me at that day. It was, it was just stupid, crazy. I said, why was I doing this? You know, uh, just stupid, stupid, but you know, the most <laughs> famous, the most famous one was actually in the Tour de France. And that was not as stupid because um, Lance, if you remember uh, time trial on Alpe d'Huez, well, when was that? 2004? Time trial on the yep, 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 correct. Uphill time trial. So, you know, we had that. Uh, I have to elaborate a little bit on this because it's, you know, it, but it's, it's a really good story. Um, so we had these threats before, as we spoke about, you know, in the past, uh, through Le Keep and through, I mean, there was certain threats. And so there was a meeting the day before of the West, uh, that time trial, you know, that you were going to ride uh, there and then there was going to be, uh, two motorbikes, and then we, we even had a secret police guy on the motorbike, if you remember, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then there was this agreement with French, that French, French TV that I was going to be just behind you until the fences start. Because, you know, French TV, the camera, they, they all wasn't, wanted to be straight behind the rider. So I said, you know what, if, if I'm behind, the people are going to open a lot, a lot faster than if it's a motorbike just behind. So we had this agreement. So you start uh, the, the, the time trial as soon as we, it was like six, 700 meters of flat. And then we take that left turn up off the West. Boom. French tele television comes at the last moment. They cut me off and they are behind, uh, they're in front of me. And, you know, I, there was no room. So, you know, a, a few corners I tried, you know, and, and until finally I said, you know what, screw this, you know, one of the corners, I just went next to them. I pushed, I pushed the, the, the camera, the, the, the motorbike off the road. So I was, the car. I was, I was behind you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. With the car. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was behind you. Uh, and then, and then, so I stayed behind you all the time until the fences started. And then I said to French, so, okay, come now, you know? Okay, fine. They did what they had to do at the end. You know, I, when the, when the, the results came, you know, with the fines and everything, I got a fine and I got relegated to last position for the day after, which was a huge mountain stage. Right. You know, so this here, here, here it goes, you know, so you're, you're in position number one. And in a mountain stage, if you're in position number 22, you are, you, you never see the race. Mm. So, so back in the days, back in, and this was also still, you know, the old companionship between, you know, directors and teams. Uh, so everybody said, Hey, what happened at the start? You know? So basically I went around, uh, all the teams and I said, look, you know, this happened, we had this deal, they didn't respect it. So we made an agreement that because if you're, you, you know, I had number 22 on the car. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to start in first position, you know, and as long as nobody passes you, you can stay wherever you want. I mean, you know, you, you don't have to go back. This is the other cars, cars who have to pass you. And so I had number 22, but I stayed in first position the whole, 
the whole the whole stage and, and uh <laughs> the, the, no wonder the uci like could if i could run you could have killed a guy two guys on a motorcycle <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> like dance listen let's not forget this was serious yeah. stuff this yeah, was no. serious stuff i mean no. we were thinking about you getting killed right no. there was no, that no, the, no, those, no those, gonna kill me those kind of threats. So, um, you know, but that's, that's the story. And, uh, yeah. So, I, and you know, what you know, it's, and that's has, of course has nothing to do with the tour of Italy, but it's an amazing story. But what's even more amazing is think of all of the action that would have been going on behind between horns and mm. yelling and, and being in that race. And, and it would go hold true for any crowded uphill finish, whether it's a tour of Italy, tour of Spain, tour of France, doesn't matter. I had no idea. Like See? normally you would think, man, what are these guys? Are these guys okay back here? Like, what is all the commotion? Mm -hmm. No, you do yeah. not hear a thing. Mm -hmm. You're just, you hear the crowd. So you hear yourself. Um, you hear a little bit of raise, but I had no, like you're five feet away, 10 feet away. You have no yeah. idea. Just pandemonium. Yeah. You see, I mean, this was this was a huge deal, but both of you guys didn't even. I mean, I'm pretty sure we talked about it, but you didn't even remember this. So George doesn't um, these kind of things. George gets really uncomfortable with. Okay, any kind of did, conflict. <laughs> George, did you remember yeah. this? Did you remember this story? I I, I did not remember the story. Wow. Well, I, I mean, well. now that I have known Johan, I think for, I would have remembered you crashing a motorcycle driver into the. Ditch. Yeah, I I think you probably filtered your riders from a lot of this drama. Like they don't need to be worrying about that. Focus on uh, racing your bike. Well, right? They they obviously saw in the in the results that I was relegated. So yeah. uh, they yeah. <laughs> they got the story. All right, what happens here? Let's before we wrap. What happens? Uh, let's just have a little fun. Johan, does uh, does Carapaz? He was your big pick at the start of the tour mm -hmm. of Italy. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. he's not been as dominant. Although now is the time if you're if you are sitting back waiting for a time to be dominant. This final week is the week. Uh, does does he have the the legs to to hold on? I think he has the legs. Uh, you know, I'm I'm. His first of all, the weather is going to change, and Carapaz is really good with lower temperatures and even with rain. Uh, although he lives in Ecuador, but he lives on a, in, a, in an area where apparently it rains all the time. Um, and I'm what I'm taking away from that stage in Torino is that um, incredible attack he did, and nobody could respond. He didn't keep it finally, but you know that was that was a sign of real power. Um, so, you know, as for now, I mean, if you look, uh, you know, Carapaz, Hindley at seven seconds, Almeida at 30 seconds, the way it stands now, <laughs> it's Almeida's race, basically, because there's a time trial at the end. So these guys need to drop Almeida and get more time on him. I think mm. they will. I think they will. He's, um, he's, he's been showing some weakness. He's Yeah, but he's been coming back all the time. And uh, last year, mm. he was really, really, really strong in the last week also. And uh, and especially yesterday. Yesterday he looked amazing. He looked really good. And um, it's anybody's race still, you know. I mean, five guys within one minute, uh, you know, with with fifteen stages behind us. That's quite unique. That's very unique. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And let's not forget about Mister Experience, the Shark. I mean, Nibali's looking better and better. Mm -hmm. He's had a great second week. Um, He's motivated. He just announced he's retiring from cycling. He's at the Giro d'Italia. I think we're going to see this guy rolling after the rest day and uh, being in a lot of aggressive moves. The Giro, the Giro is a race where, you know, in those last stages, there's still, it's still possible to, to, to have a big turnaround. You know I mean? Listen, yep. Nibali won, won his Giro like that, you know, given he, there was, there was bad, bad luck of Kreuzweg who crashed, but Chris, Chris uh, from the same. Chris Froome, the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, I mean, for Nibali, it's obviously, you know, there's not one, it's not just one guy who has to fail. There's several guys who have to fail. So I think it's it's more difficult, but I'm not excluding him getting close to the podium, if not on the podium. Great. Yeah. And uh, we also, we also speaking of old guys, we got to point out Posto Vito. <laughs> or have, I mean, this, this guy is amazing. 39 years old, didn't even have a team at the at the beginning of the year. Gets mm -hmm. picked up by Intermarche, and I mean, he's just there amongst the top five, six, seven guys every day. Uh, it looks like crap on the bike, but yep. he is so strong. It's amazing. Yeah. Sitting in fifth, just a minute down. I mean, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, okay. Before we wrap, before yeah. we wrap, we do need to tell people if they have not checked out outcomes, 
Right. You, you are missing a fantastic show. It's Johan and Spencer Martin really breaking down. If you're, if you're into sports betting, even if you're not, I, th- I think they throw out a lot of other interesting things that are worth listening to. You, you do need to have a season pass to access that, but it'll come to your device just like any podcast does. Uh, and it's worth it. And you get all the other member benefits with part of that. That's right. They're right. They are right more than they're wrong. Which yesterday, yesterday I was, oh man. I mean, I looked at the race. I watched the race with a completely different view because I had picked Santiago Buitrago for the win and he got second. Um, <laughs> so I hope so I get it right for tomorrow. Yeah. I was going to say the way that works is okay. Yeah. You were wrong, but they, the, the, yeah, I mean, that's the, 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 the way it, and there is now so much action out there on cycling. And I also want to be very aware that, you know, we have heard a few comments from folks uh, talking about us uh, doing a show focused on sports betting. Um, and, and look, I mean, it's a very real people do get in trouble uh, when they take unreasonable and, 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 uh, excessive risks. Uh, w- w- we advise people: look, the, don't do that. Just, you know, have a little fun with it. Uh, but also, if you're going to bet, why not be armed with the knowledge? Why not be armed with, you know, some of the best insight that you can get in professional cycling? If you're going to go out there and take a risk, take your risk with take a smart risk. And so, uh, not to minimize the the real world stuff that can go on. Um, certainly, be careful and 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 know your limits uh, and, and and get beamed up. So that was sort of our perspective. And what's real fun about it is, is, you know, if, if you, for very small betting amounts, very small, you know, you like 10, 20 bucks with some of these breakaway specialists, you could get some great results and not risk a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll be back. Uh, well, you guys, JB2 will be back in a couple of days. Lama Vita mm-hmm. off. So obviously back outcomes every day, but uh, we'll do a recap show. What next Monday, a week from now. Yep, after the Giro. George, check your schedule. <laughs> Memorial Day. You know, it's a holiday here, right? But uh, I'll be whatever the team needs. I'll make myself available. That's a very That's good, good point. That's a very good point. It is a holiday. We, we could do it it's right holiday, after yeah. the stage ends. The last stage ends might be, might be better for this. Um, I'm, I'm on a golf trip. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to find a big room like George has. Where, yeah. Listen, guys, wherever you guys are, I'm sure that you guys can spend 45 minutes for this. Yeah, so exactly. There's no, ex- right. no excuses. No excuses. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. See you next week.